We realize, in fact, that there is more emission due to the building materials than to the emission of the energy used during operation. Many manufacturers 10 years ago didn't have an idea of what was the CO2 weight of their materials. The introduction of this new regulation, the RE 2020 in France, is indeed a big change. Before, there was only a thermal regulation. We were focusing on the energy that was uh, used to heat the house, to heat the water, etc. With this uh, new regulation, we have introduced a life cycle analysis, meaning that the embodied carbon will be also taken into account. Embodied carbon is the carbon emissions that are related to a material. And when we're talking about whole life embodied carbon, then we're looking into the carbon emissions that are related to the materials during the life cycle of a building. The former regulation, RT 2012, were prepared in 2010, before COP21 and the Paris Agreement. At that time, we were mainly concentrating on energy consumption and the climate change was not so much on the agenda. That's why RE 2020 was prepared to have regulation in line with the political goals. For the regulator, there will be several dates in order to enforce this regulation. A slow path going to 2025 so everybody can acquire this life cycle and carbon thinking. And then the slope to 2030 is more stringent on the built environment. What we've been building in order to answer the objective of the next regulation is kind of a boot camp for all the landlords, developers, designers and architects in order to get through this low carbon thinking and to acquire these new methodologies and this new knowledge, training everybody and having together ideas and building common tools in order to get through this new regulation and to be harsh on carbon. How can we look into using different materials? In the new regulation, they want to introduce biosourced materials. It doesn't mean that we have to uh, uh, let's say, discourage cement. The bio-based materials are part of the answer for decarbonization. But first, you have to mix materials, you have to change materials, you have to reduce the amount of material you put in. We also need the material producers to understand the materials, their effects uh, on, you know, not as just a single material, but when you look into the whole uh, combination of materials in a building. A2020 is only for new buildings. In the past, we were thinking that new buildings were better than existing ones. In a life cycle approach, in an existing building, you avoid most of the emission to the building construction materials. Old buildings could be better than new ones. And this is clearly a big paradigm change. All this beautiful from the climate change point of view. The French methodology is fitting very well into what we are aiming for in Europe. We are not harmonizing this totally in the European countries because the methodology is developing. You can differentiate between how much you include in your life cycle assessment. Do you include the whole building or do you exclude the foundations and stuff like that? we might see some slight differences between how the different countries will handle this. We have to educate people on life cycle thinking. Everybody has to train to have a new sense of where carbon is. At the very first drawing, you got 80% of the impact within the architecture. In policy, it is so important that you have the legal requirements, but you have also something to really encourage people to do much better. We have to move a large industry with companies and actors that are small and larger ones and so on, and where the knowledge level will of course be very different and will be take time to get everybody on board. The important point is that the competition 
between all the players to find a new solution, low carbon solution is open and the imagination of many people is running to try to find better solutions.